My new knit scarf pattern in pennant pleating stitch is an easy knit and purl design. It's great for beginners because it's an easy eight row knit and purl design. It creates a reversible texture. The scarf size is 10 by 72 inches long. The pleated columns with embedded triangles create unique visual interest in a beginner friendly project. And this wide, soft scarf can also be worn as an elegant wrap. Hello, I'm Kristen, and welcome to my channel, Studio Knit. For our knitting supplies, we're using bulky weight number no. five yarn. You'll need about 450 to 500 yards total to make the entire length of the scarf. Of course, you can always modify the size as you'd like. It's really easy to do so with this pattern. And if you'd like to use my exact same yarn here, I am loving Cascades Superwash Merino Wool 128. This blue color is called Pacific 1960. We're using straight knitting needles, size 10 US, and you'll want them to be at least nine inches in length or longer. Scissors, a tapestry needle, and if you'd like to add fringe to your ends, I find that a crochet hook is really helpful. So let's knit it up. We're beginning by casting on 38 stitches onto our straight knitting needles. So however you'd like to cast on, I'm just doing the typical long tail cast on method here. As always, the pattern design instructions are available totally for free over on my website, Studio Knit. The ad-free printable PDF pattern is in my Studio Knit shop available for purchase. This texture is among the 50 designs in my Knit Stitch pattern book. It's right here on page 35. It is time to begin row one. The side edges of our scarf are nice and smooth with the slip stitch chain. So since we're knitting flat on straight needles, we are beginning every row with one slip stitch purlwise with the yarn in back. We begin a six stitch repeat of K1, P5. So we are knitting one stitch, bringing the yarn to the front, purling five stitches, and repeating K1, P5, all the way down the row. This will be a total of six repeats, and we're going to finish with that one little last purl stitch, P1. Here on row two, begin with that slip stitch, so your yarn is in the back, slipping one stitch purlwise, and then it's time for the repeat. This time it's knit four, that's K4. And then your yarn comes to the front and we're purling two stitches. Repeat K4, P2, all the way down the row until you reach that final stitch and purl one. Row three, we're slipping one stitch, knitting three stitches, that's K3, and purling three stitches, P3. So it's K3, P3, all the way down the row, ending with purling one stitch. Here on row four, we're slipping one stitch, knitting two stitches, K2, purling four stitches, Repeating this pattern, we have six stitches that are repeating K2, P4, all the way down the row, ending with one purl stitch. And we're halfway through our pennant pleating stitch. It's an eight row repeat. So here on row five, we're slipping one stitch, knitting five stitches, K5, and purling one stitch. Repeating these six stitches, K5, P1, all the way down the row, and ending with purling one stitch. Row six is exactly how we knit row four, and that is knitting two and purling four, K2, P4, all the way down the row, finishing with one purl stitch. Row seven, is identical to row three. 
and it is K3P3. So we're knitting three and we're purling three all the way down the row, ending with one purl stitch. Our last row, row eight, we're knitting four stitches, K4, and purling two stitches. Row eight is identical to row two, and we're finishing with one purl stitch. And this is what the pennant pleating stitch looks like with rows one through eight. And now it's time for a little bit of a snack break. I have these adorable butterfly gummy candies. If you have stuck with me and watched me knit up this scarf, rows one through eight so far, go ahead and drop a butterfly emoji in the comments. Say hello. Let's finish it up. For binding off our stitches, I am just doing a standard bind off like I do in most of my projects. Some people like to bind off in pattern, which means binding off knits and purls separately. For this, I don't think it's really necessary to get that detailed because the edges look great with a standard bind off. And especially if you add fringe, you won't even see the ends at all. Cut your yarn, take your tapestry needle and weave those yarn ends through. You have probably used multiple balls of yarn. And so you may have a few yarn ends that you'll need to weave through and cut your yarn. Personally, I really like blocking my work. I just wet block it with these blocking mats and T-pins. I like to spray it with water on both sides with a water bottle, and then I just let it sit overnight. It has a really nice drape. It allows the yarn to relax. The texture comes through more beautifully, and I think it looks extra good in photographs anytime I block my work. If you'd like to add fringe, we are cutting our yarn strands into 14 inch length. I just wrap it around my phone and we're cutting 49 strands. We're going to have seven different fringe spots on our scarf. There's one on each end and then it nicely aligns with the five pleated creases. Taking seven strands of yarn, I'm folding and weaving them through the stitches of our scarf, pretty much in the second stitch I like to do it. And once it's halfway through, I take the ends of the fringe and pull them through using a crochet hook and then just cinch to secure. And taking your scissors, Cut the fringe to the size that you'd like and you can even it up a little bit as well. If you'd like more great beginner friendly knitting projects, check out this next video and I will see you there.